Hi, and welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name. Convivial, congenial, and amiable as always. Great to have you along with us. I'm shifting up the order just a little bit. I was going to talk about immigration this uh, first hour. We probably will get to that probably in the second hour. But I've just got to talk about this NSA surveillance business. We've got to revisit this. And I want to talk about that for a bit as we open the program. Today we'll have Hans von Spakovsky on at the bottom of the hour to talk about government tyranny, government intrusion out west against a farmer who was a personal friend of mine. I didn't know him well, but I was an acquaintance of his. His wife was a former congressman from the state of Idaho, Helen Chenoweth Hage. His name, Wayne Hage. Both of them now deceased. Uh, and uh, so we'll have Hans walk us through what the federal government does. And they do this all the time out west. That's where you've got rangeland. You've got land where cattle can graze. You've got timber. You've got forests. You've got rivers. You've got all sorts of sort of natural assets and resources that the federal government just loves to keep entrepreneurs from getting their hands on. Uh, they, they want it to become the land not of multiple use, but the land of no use, and we'll have Hans walk us through all of that. Southern Baptist Convention, by the way, approved a resolution this morning expressing opposition to and disappointment in the Boy Scouts of America's new policy allowing gay scouts. It also calls on the Boy Scouts to remove executive and board leaders who tried to allow gays as both members and leaders without consulting the many religious groups that sponsor scout troops. So they're calling for some heads to roll at the BSU, uh, at the Boy Scout uh, leadership. Uh, the resolution does not expressly recommend that Southern Baptists drop ties with the scouts, which I personally am, am disappointed in. It does su express support for those churches and families that decide to do so. It encourages churches and families who choose to remain within the scouts to work toward reversing the new membership policy. Now, with all due respect to the Southern Baptists, that, 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 that is lunacy. To think that this policy can possibly be reversed, it ain't going to happen. No way. I mean, once you've crossed that threshold, it is inevitable now. I mean, by this time next year, we're probably going to have adult homosexuals serving as scout leaders in the Boy Scouts. So it's just kind of naive and gullible on the part of the Southern Baptist to think that some kind of change is uh, possible. And they're kind of allowing churches now to be in league and sponsor an organization that will not allow them to adopt a biblical standard of sexuality in their own outreach as an expression of the church. They will be forbidden by the Boy Scouts from doing that. So that's sort of a half a loaf from the Southern Baptist, at least partially correct, uh, urging uh, Southern Baptist churches to disavow what the Boy Scouts of America have done. And then um, remember my team sent me this link this morning HGTV. I don't even know what that is. That's like a, that, is that like a, a shopping website? HGTV? Somebody help me with that. I, I think it's a kind of a shopping network type place. But they had some kind of a um, presentation this week talking about the 4th of July. And they were using the American flag as a tablecloth. Now, the segment was entitled Classic 4th of July Table Setting ideas the photographs show bowls of fruit and a jar of lemonade sitting atop old glory they called the flag an unconventional table linen well no kidding and here's here's why they uh, said use the american flag but be sure you use a nylon american flag so that spills can easily be wiped off and the flag can later be hung with pride on a flagpole so they admit that you're going to spill all kinds of stuff, lemonade and iced tea and watermelon drippings and corn cob drippings, all going to fall on this uh, American flag, so make sure it's nylon. Now, Home and Garden TV, that's what it stands for, Home and Garden TV. Well, that would explain why I've never seen it, had no idea what it was. Anyway, the decorating tips appear to be in violation of the U.S. flag code. Here's how the U.S. flag code reads. The flag should never touch anything beneath it, such as the ground, the floor, water, or merchandise, and the only circumstances under which an American flag can be draped is over a coffin, over a picnic table, nada, zip, no way. So let's hope HGTV quickly gets their mind right on that. Now, I want to shift gears, talk about this NSA business, this surveillance business, 
uh, even got Politico out there today saying, look, this, and, and they're starting to use the Obama word. They're using the O word. He's been largely insulated from this by the mainstream media. You've got the Associated Press out there telling their people, don't use the word whistleblower to talk about this Snowden guy. Um, Mika Brzezinski had an exchange this morning on Morning Joe. Uh, she refused permission for anybody to refer to this guy as a whistleblower. They just want him to be referred to as a traitor because they're they're uh, circling the wagons around um, President Obama. But Politico is starting to use the O word. And again, all of this by the media up to this point has been to try to shelter the Messiah. So the, the fault is with the State Department. It's rogue agents in the IRS. It's Eric Holder at the DOJ. Anybody, everybody but Obama. But Politico now on this surveillance scandal is out there using the O word and they're talking about his trust deficit is going into the uh, tank. And even Politico is admitting that the media has been dancing around Obama's connection with or responsibility for the NSA seizing of phone records and this PRISM uh, program with those nine major Internet uh, providers. Politico describes Obama's moves, quote, as a secret program that dragnets most phone records and much of the Internet. And Politico goes on, the very same media that doesn't want to admit what Obama is doing is the very same media that spent years savaging President George W. Bush for doing much less. But to admit their precious one, that's their term, not mine, to admit their precious one is Bush on steroids is probably a reality that is just too bleak to face. Now, I want you to go back. This is a, a soundbite that, that, that Walker, who's our call screener, got for me just this morning, and I just picked, it, picked up on it right before it came across the street. It's, it, it's solid gold. This is Vice President Joe Biden. We just have the audio because of time constraints. We just have the audio here. But this is Vice President Joe Biden back in 2006 talking about the NSA and the administration, the United States government, surveilling your phone calls. Let's listen. I don't have to listen to your phone calls and know what you're doing. If I know every single phone call you made, I'm able to determine every single person you talk to. I can get a pattern about your life that is very, very intrusive. And the real question here is, what do they do with this information that they collect that does not have anything to do with Al-Qaeda? And we're going to trust the president and the vice president of the United States that they're doing the right thing. Don't count me in on that. So you're Hilarious. out. Did you tell right, President Joe. Obama you're out on I'm, this? Because I'm, unless he's changed his mind. I'm totally with boring. you on that, Joe. Joe Biden says, hey, if they're surveilling your phone records, they're monitoring your phone records, do not trust the president and do not trust the vice president when they tell you that they're doing the right thing. All right, I'm with you, Joe. I'm taking your advice. I'm all, all over that. You're the vice president. I don't trust you. President Obama's the president. I don't trust him. And Joe, just following your advice, thanks for the tip. Really appreciate it. Now, Biden is exactly right about how much information can be revealed through this metadata. You know, the defense now from everybody in the administration, and you, you got to strap it on for this because I want you to, because this illustrates just how much the government can find out about you and me just by this metadata, even though they don't know the content, even though they're not eavesdropping on the phone call. They're not listening to you talk and not listening to the other person respond to you. Maybe they're not doing that, but there is a tremendous amount they can determine about you. They can learn about you just by the metadata. And, and remember, the defense here all along is, hey, the government just has the metadata. All they've got is the record of who you called, when you called, how long the call lasted. But here's a piece on Zero Hedge this morning. Title of the piece, Metadata Can Tell the Government More About You Than the Content of Your Phone Calls. And again, realize that this is not about whether we have anything to hide. I don't have anything to hide. You don't have anything to hide. I'm not concerned about anything that the government would find out by perusing my phone records or my emails. I'm not, I don't have anything to hide. But the issue here is not whether we have anything to hide. It's whether they have the right to look. The, and the answer to that question, according to the Fourth Amendment, is absolutely not not without probable cause that we've been involved in some kind of criminal behavior. Now, the ACLU makes this observation about the metadata. 
An MIT uh, study a few years back found that reviewing people's social networking contacts alone was sufficient to determine their sexual orientation. And consider this, says the ACLU, metadata from email communications was sufficient to identify the mistress of then-CIA director David Petraeus and then drive him out of office. That was all done simply by the use of uh, metadata and analysis of metadata. Now, uh, they go on. Let's see. um, Yeah, this is the ACLU talking. Again, repeated calls. Listen to this. Repeated calls to Alcoholics Anonymous, hotlines for gay teens, abortion clinics, or a gambling bookie may tell you all you need to know about a person's problems If a politician were revealed to have repeatedly called a phone sex hotline after 2 a.m., no one would need to know what was said. Here's the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Government officials are trying to say that disclosure of metadata without the actual voice isn't a big deal. Let's take a closer look. They know you rang a phone sex service at 2.24 a.m. and spoke for 18 minutes, but they don't know what you talked about. They know you called a suicide prevention hotline from the Golden Gate Bridge, but the topic of the call remains a secret. They know you spoke with an HIV testing service, then your doctor, then your health insurance company in the same hour, but they don't know what was discussed. They know you received a call from the local NRA office while it was having a campaign against gun legislation and then called your senators and congressional representatives immediately after, but the content of those calls remains safe from government intrusion. They know you called the gynecologist, spoke for half an hour, then called the local Planned Parenthood number later that day, but... Nobody knows what you talked about. So this metadata can reveal a lot more about the content of your phone calls than the government is implying. In fact, they could reconstruct an entire Tea Party network. They get one person who they know is a member of the Tea Party. They just look who they're talking to, who they're sending emails to, who they're receiving emails from. They can identify an entire Tea Party network and report every one of those people to the IRS for harassment and for obstruction. So very, very uh, intrusive. A person who knows another's travels can deduce whether he is a weekly churchgoer, a heavy drinker, a regular at the gym, an unfaithful husband, an outpatient receiving medical treatment, or an associate of particular individuals. All such facts. Focal Point, AFR Talk.